everyone, I'm Tabitha and today we're talking about death. Death turns out to be a pretty common topic of discussion among the writing community and it's a big part of a lot of fiction writing. Death is a part of real life. Sure, it's not a part we like to talk about or maybe even think about, but it is a part of life nonetheless. So it makes sense that that part of life needs to end up being represented in our fiction writing. A lot of authors use death as a catalyst for change. Death can bring about feelings of sorrow, loss, or fear for the future in your main character. Or, depending on the kind of character we're talking about the death of, it can also bring about a sense of hope, joy, and an overall feeling of calm. Today we're going to talk about five things you should consider before planning the fictional death of a character in your story. Number one, how clear are you going to make this death? In a lot of writing, not seeing a body equals that person may not be dead. Think of it like the horror movie where the villain falls down seemingly lifeless, but when the hero turns their back, that villain magically gets up and disappears only to attack again. This can also happen to heroes. Arthur Conan Doyle wrote a Sherlock Holmes book where Sherlock fell seemingly to his death, the book called The Final Problem, only to have Sherlock come back later explaining that he survived the fall. Because of stories like this, readers are skeptical. If you give us even the smallest inkling that that person may not have died, we're always gonna hold out hope. So you need to decide right from the beginning, how clear will you make this death? Are we going to get some kind of funeral scene or lifeless eyes, something to give us closure to convince us that this person is gone? Only you can tell us if that's important. Number two, who is mourning this character? This is especially important to consider if we're talking about a villain. A lot of newbie writers tend to think incorrectly that no one's gonna mourn a villain because he was the bad guy. But the reality is nothing in life is really that black and white. Is there a child who's going to wanna to avenge this death? Is there a loved one who mourns who they could have been or who they were? These questions are really important. In our lives, our fear of death is often rooted in a fear that nobody will mourn us or remember us when we die. So in literature, it's nice to build that in. Who is the person who's mourning them? Somebody should feel something when this character dies, even if it's only fleeting. Number three, what happens next? Unless the character death that you're planning is the absolute end of your book, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend, the characters are going to have to move on after this death. You have to decide how they're gonna handle this. Are they going to continue to talk to this character as though they can hear them? Are they believing in a deity that they can pray to in order to ensure their loved one is safe? Will they want to avenge the death of this loved one? Will they have to elect a new leader, one who hopefully won't be as corrupt as President Snow? In real life, dealing with death is hard. It brings up emotions, reminders, and challenges. We often think of our deceased loved ones at the weirdest times. Building this into your writing can be an incredible strength if you choose to do that. A great example that comes to my mind is Friedrich Bachmann's book, My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. He has a quick memory scene for a character in this book that simply says, there's something special about a grandmother's house. You never forget how it smells. Something that simple and that small serves as a reminder to readers that Friedrich Bachmann and this character understand the pain of dealing with living life after death. And that is something that will keep you reading. This is especially important if you're writing for children or teens. The concept of death for this age group can often be new and uncomfortable. They have a serious sense of, is what I'm doing normal? Books like this help make it normal, acceptable, and okay to feel those feelings after a death. For that reason, my advice is spend a little time brainstorming what your main character's world looks like after this death and how that's different than it was before. Number four, is there closure? You've created characters who mourn this death. You've told us what happens in the world after. Now it's time to decide if your characters are ever going to get closure. Are they going to have a moment of clarity where they realize everything's gonna be okay? Maybe your characters believe in an afterlife. Will they have a sign given to them telling them that their loved one moved on? Maybe your character chose the path of revenge. Were they successful? Closure is not always possible in real life. 
But that's one of the things that can make it so tempting to include in literature. Whichever way you decide to go, it's important that that's a conscious choice. Are you giving these characters closure or not? Number five, what will be their last words? Many times authors don't like to consider this because the character doesn't know they're going to die or because they wouldn't be unusually poignant in their speech. But you know they're going to die. So their final words that you get to plan don't necessarily need to be poignant, but they should be the most on-brand line that character gets to deliver. I have a troublemaker in my current work in progress who loves to question authority. If he doesn't make it through this work in progress, his last line is probably gonna be, why would I do that? Or you can't make me. Don't take my word for it. I've compiled some of my favorite final lines from some characters in literature. Some of these characters knew they were gonna die. Some of them knew it was likely they could die. Some of them had no idea. Judge for yourself. First, never go against the Sicilian when death is on the line. This cocky sense of self comes to us from Vicini from The Princess Bride and is a perfect line. How about this one? A plague of both your houses. They have made worms meat of me. That very on-brand curse comes from Mercutio from Romeo and Juliet. Let's get that place now. That very hopeful line comes to us from Lenny of Mice and Men. Or the simple on guard Rainsford, the last lines ever delivered by General Zaroff in the most dangerous game. And finally, my favorite, come on, you can do better than that. Serious Black, Harry Potter. You see, you get the ability to give those characters a final line that just brings their personality to life. So choose wisely. Okay, that's it for me and my questions I think you should consider before writing your fictional character's death. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down there. If there's anything I can do to help you, you know that I will. Hit subscribe so you know when I'm back. Keep plotting the path to your dreams and I'll see you next time. Bye.